Check, check. How's the sound? You're coming in loud and clear. How is it on your end? I'm still only picking up the throat mic. Um, try dialing it back a bit. Uh, damn it. None of the external pickups are working. Although I'm not entirely sure what I did to get it to function in the first place. Maybe there's something wrong with the rig itself. I'll play with it tomorrow. I'm surprised. Management bought something that was broken? Oh, uh, they didn't buy it. <laughs> I scrounged it from some discarded parts in the steam tunnels. The throat mic? I got that off the corpse of a Korean fighter pilot I found down here embedded in a wall. You'd be surprised what you could turn up down here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Management ain't giving me boo as far as my budget is concerned. You're a new program. You have to expect these things. What I expect is for you to find me some news stories. I need a sponsor with deep pockets, and we are not going to get that without ratings. If I have to spout one more coded message from the big yet threatening agency, I'm going to puke. Wait, those are coded messages? Holy hopping hunto car. Are you really that naive? Rob, you're not one of those... Hantokar worshippers? What? No, no, I, I just say his name a lot ever since the miniature invaders reach my neighborhood. They seem to be a whole lot less likely to murder you in your sleep if they think you're a worshipper. I thought the town retook the bowling alley. Yeah, but it only cut off supply lines for the troops on the surface. They scattered out, they're going all gorilla. You know, it's kind of like that children's cartoon, uh, The Littles? Except they try to poison your food, and I've developed a fear of the smell of almonds. Wait, is that why you've been having me taste your coffee? Oh no, I'm just making sure it isn't too hot. Can't afford to burn my mouth. My voice is my life. Oh, that makes sense. Not that it matters much. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Cecil goes on vacation, and instead of an opportunity to strut my stuff, I get a threatening oil painting. Not to mention the fact that Cecil gets all the love in the station, and I get Jack. Got. Past tense. Cecil barred intern Jack this morning. Uh, there was an incident involving, uh, spider wolves? Cecil has the worst luck with interns. But he does have the most lovely voice. He is such a professional. He practically saved the town. He saved the mayor multiple times. He yes, I get it. He's amazing. I get it. My problem is, is he gets away with too much crap. He talks about the dock park, he gets to go on vacation. He dates an interloper, nobody blinks an eye. He talks about uh, Grove Park and <clears throat> that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, you mean the shape in Grove Park that no one acknowledges or speaks about? Yo! Phil? Phil? You there? I'm fine. I was getting a hot dog at Rocky Ray's and... Suddenly, this red ray of light lanced out of nowhere and almost hit me. Ray got on the way. What happened? Uh, seems Ray went somewhere else and left his hot dog stand here, along with all his hot dogs, and his hand still smoldering at the wrist, holding my hot dog. So, free hot dog? Rob, that would be dishonest. I'm just gonna leave his money here for when he gets back. I know you can't see it, but right now I'm rubbing the bridge of my nose and I'm shaking my head slightly. My point is, Cecil gets away with stuff that if I tried, I'd get sent to the dark box and erased from existence. I didn't think it was so bad. What wasn't so bad? The dark box. Although, admittedly, the guy right before me left the hatch ajar and all the dark leaked out, but yeah, dark box. Did not live up to the hype. You know, Phil... Uh... That reminds me, I I've been meaning to ask you, uh, why aren't you dead? Explain? I count at least five times you should be dead. The life expectancy of your average intern is usually measured in hours. Yet, here you are. So, how? Oh, I know he can't see it, but I was shrugging. Um, it's like Cecil said at the intern orientation, <clears throat> don't be a statistic. So, I'm trying very hard not to be a numerical representation that is a simplification of events. Also, I got a lucky marble from management. Marble? Yeah, found it in my inbox. I carry it with me. It's a white marble with a black dot on the side. White with black? <sighs> Glow cloud. Phil, 
Take it out and tell me if it's round or has sides. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's got tiny sides. Didn't notice that. Count them. How many white? How many black? Okay, and... Yeah, that's strange. There's more black sides now. Four, and a fifth side is turning black as we speak. You really need to read the employee handbook more. That is a black dodecahedron. No, it's mostly white. Phil, you're a nice kid. I swear, sometimes I want to beat you like a baby seal. A black dodecahedron starts out white. Every time you survive a near-death experience, a side turns black. You get to turn it in and get your own show. It's in that section that's titled Ha, repeated about 50 times and ends in like this will ever happen. Wait, so management gave this to me because they think I'm worth getting my own show? No, no, no. It's automatic. If you live long enough, they give it to you. Nobody's ever finished a black dodecahedron, however. Oh, wow. That's just neat. Huh. I guess it is lucky. Well, let's hope your luck holds. Finish eating your hot dog and then get out there. Find me something to talk about. The show's almost about to begin and I'm starting with another coded message. It's harder than you think to fake ignorance and spout this crap with a straight face. You know, I'm beginning to think that you're a glasses half empty kind of guy, Rob. You need to be more upbeat. You need to be more upbeat. Isn't that what Jack used to say? He did have a positive attitude. Jack was skeletonized in less than a minute by what basically was a swarm of eight-legged piranha. Then they laid eggs in his ribcage and buried the ribcage under a cactus, which I believe is in the lobby. Intern Jack was a member of PETA. <laughs> true, true. All right, show starting. Stop wasting time. Buy me that story. On it, Rob. and begin to wail. And now, letters from the listeners. Hank, agents 4 and 18 need to be prepped to act in three days. The explosives will be left in the storm drain off Elm Street 10 minutes after the message is broadcast on the radio. Make sure to rewrite this in the correct code phrases before you email it in. If this operation fails, you can forget about demotion. Our internal organs will be extracted and used to build our replacements. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, listener, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is you're asking here. I think that what you're saying is that you are feeling a great deal of pressure at work. If that's the case, then I can assure you that you are not alone. We all worry about our internal organs being removed and repurposed in a way that is detrimental to our career. This is a common fear, but not one to dwell on. Let's say that if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in your life. And that is the same as stealing. We all must hate our jobs, live in continual fear that at any moment you may lose your job and the means to support your family. Your family that depends on you. How your failure to keep your job will result in their pain and suffering must continually weigh upon your mind. Think about how they have no control over their lives and are entirely dependent on you and how you have no real control over anything. Lie to your family. Lie to them and convince them that they and you somehow can control fate and so they don't need to worry. If they are doomed, they cannot stop the doom. So there's no point in worrying. If everything is fine, they will be fine. And then there's no point in worrying. And that applies to you as well. Be unhappy and hate your lot in life, but do not fear the outcomes. For you are powerless to change them and therefore there's no point in being concerned. Oh. 
co-host Severed Monsterhead apparently has a comment here. Uh, he is mouthing the words, I pray to a god I do not believe in for a death that will not come. Well, wise words, co-host Severed Monsterhead. Wise words indeed. And now, corrections. Last week I gave everybody a panicked message about the curfew for everyone's children. I told everyone there had to be something wrong with it. Well, I was right and wrong at the same time. Seems that I misread the press release. It's not a curfew for minors, as in children, but a curfew for minors, as in people who work underground in a mine. Now, you'd think that wouldn't be a big deal, what with the only mine in town being abandoned. However, as it turns out, all the government officials that work in the abandoned mine outside of town, in order to maintain their cover, have listed their occupation as minor on their taxes. Apparently, the entire night shift was rested tonight when they were heading into work. That has left the abandoned mine woefully understaffed. As we speak, loved ones and other political prisoners are escaping the mine and fleeing into the night. Most of them are being picked off by the giant iridescent tongues that lurk in the surrounding desert. The vague yet menacing government agency has asked me to ask all of those escaping prisoners to please turn around and go back to your illegal indefinite detention cell at once. The memo goes on to say, no, 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 there is a containment breach, get someone down too. Then it just sort of trails off for a bit. And then it's heavily stained with what I believe are tears, perhaps spittle. And then it concludes in shaky handwriting. I made my wife a promise I'd make it home alive after every shift. Please tell Carol I'm sorry I broke my word. And it is signed with a dried brownish red blotch. All I have to say is... Thank the glow cloud these guys are being arrested because they obviously have been using illegal implements of inscription. Even if the curfew for minors is some sort of bureaucratic snafu, someone should find this red-brown blotch character and make an example out of him. This has been Corrections. Okay, hit the pre-recording. We got a few minutes before I have to go live again. What you got for me? Tolly found a glacier in the desert. Rob? I'm sorry. Did you just tell me that Tully, the madman who's been giving cacti haircuts in the wastelands, found a glacier in a desert? Yeah, that's news, right? Yeah, if it's real. Why would he lie? He's a good friend of mine. You'd be his only friend then. Not that I dislike him any more than I dislike anyone else. I honestly think you got a bun wrap there, but that doesn't change the fact that glaciers don't form without, oh, snow, which we don't have. Well, if he is lying, then we can report about him lying? Uh, actually, just had a worms attack. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, that was a worms attack. Maybe we got a glacier. Hmm, would be the weirdest thing to happen. Okay, look, uh, go out into the desert, find the glacier, find out what's going on. You know, if we're lucky, there's some sort of horrible doom lurking in the desert, and we'll get the scoop. Imagine the look on Golden Boy's face. Who's Golden Boy? Really? You... Never mind, look. The recording is coming to an end. Get out there, find out what's going on. Go, 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 go. Take Tully with you, find me a glacier, or prove he's a nut job. One or the other. On it, Rob. And now, a word from our sponsor. What if everything was spider? A pile of spiders in the shape of a giant spider knocks on your door made of spiders. It is wearing a hat of spiders that looks like a spider. You, a spider, open the door of spiders. He tips his hat, which is a spider, then explodes into spiders that disappear into the ground, which is also spiders. You weep baby spiders from oh so many eyes. No people, no words, no thought, only spider. We communicate by sensation. Feel with long legs. Black eyes peer into the darkness, but can only see the swarm. The swarm walks back. We click. We scamper. 
No land, no sea, no air, only spider. A dark writhing mass, we crawl through corpses, we consume, we lay our eggs in the deceased. The living spring from the dead, each having its time, each having a season. We breed, we rot. No time, no space, no heaven, only spider. Our atoms are made of subatomic particles that are held together with webbing. The protons are made of three quarks. Each quark is a spider. They exist as a cloud of quantum entangled spider. The Higgs boson gives everything mass and spider. If you were to somehow step outside of spider, you would see all of spider as a single mass with eight wiry legs. No me, no you, no we, only spider. Ace, the helpful place. Now we go live to Intern Phil out in the desert with social outcast Tully the Barber. Phil, what's going on? Well, we are running as fast as we can from a really fast moving, smoking mass of ice made of some sort of bluish white material that is bearing down on us, and we are about to die. Well, don't do that. Dying is really bad. Thanks for the advice. I'll. Phil? Phil? Uh, I appear to have fallen through some sort of mine shaft covered in a desert. I am in a tunnel. The hole above me has been covered with a swiftly moving mass of ice-like substance, and Tully is nowhere to be seen. I am standing up. I am looking around. It looks like a tunnel uh, lit by red emergency lighting. There is a sign uh, that says Junction THX-1138. Rob, I got no idea where I am. There are four ways to go here. Any thoughts? There are steam tunnels everywhere under Night Vale. I know quite a bit of them. Uh, I don't remember that one. Pick a direction, start giving me landmarks as you go. Oh, and if you see any pipes in the wall, listen to them and tell me what you hear. What am I listening for? Ideally, the sound of a kitten being pneumatically shot through a pipe. Oh my glow cloud! They aren't pumping kittens through the pipes down here, are they? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Heavens, no. <laughs> no, uh, guinea pigs. It just sounds like kittens for some reason. Okay, well, I'm going to pick the tunnel that seems to have a flashing light somewhere at the end. It looks somewhat promising. That works. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, got a call. Uh, good morning, Night Vale tonight. Robert York speaking. I'm sorry, but we're not taking any calls right now. Uh, huh? Oh. Oh? Oh. Hold on. Th Phil? Right here. It's Jocelyn Bell from the Pulsar facility. Uh, she says that you fell down one of their tunnels. She's got good news and uh, some bad news. The good news is she can direct you out. The bad news is, the liquid hydrogen used to cool the Pulsar facility spoiled, and it was vented to the surface. That's what made the glacier. It's apparently made up of CO2 condensed out of the atmosphere, and if someone doesn't get to the emergency shutoff control soon, the containment field will collapse, and everything within two light minutes of Night Vale will collapse down to the size of a lima bean. That's terrible. I know. I hate lima beans. What can I do? Well, she says look for a flashing black and white light. That's the way to go. Head that way as fast as you can. Oh, she also says there may be a massive radiation leak. Try not to absorb any. How do I avoid radiation? She says glowing green is bad, so don't get any green on you and don't glow. Important safety tip. Okay, I'm at the end of the... Whoa. I see... What cannot be? I see a massive, cavernous space that is far too large to be under Night Vale. It is large and round, and it has a walkway that goes around it. There is a railing. 
along the wall in both directions are windows. They are massive and almost too big for me to see the tops or bottom of them stretching above and below me. Almost. The windows are tinted a dark red and I can sort of see out of them. Is that an ocean? It's hard to tell, for in the center of this space, I have no other word, is a spinning sphere. It is either very small and only a few hundred feet away, or miles across, with a titanic empty expanse between us. It is like a star, but a photographic negative of one. Everything is. Everything is black and white and gray. You know, you would think it would be brighter. Jocelyn asks, how fast is it rotating? Very. So fast, it's pulsating flicker. It's hypnotic. Okay. Jocelyn says you should be near the employee break room. Turning left. Hey, Rob, this did turn out to be a real story, eh? Yes, it did. Now, focus. You should be coming up on the door. I am. Uh, it's... it's got a fire axe in it. Like someone was trying to get in. The fire axe is... black and white? I mean... It looks like it's from an old colorless photograph. The axe is stuck in the door. There is nobody else here. Jocelyn says you need to hurry. If you need to, use the axe to get in there. All right. Looks like the... Uh, the most of the... Uh, okay, got it. I'm in. And everything is in black and white. No, green. Then glow cloud. What am I looking for? Okay. She says, next to the vending kiosk is a terminal. You can use it to order food or activate the emergency shutdown. You'll need to turn on the terminal and type in the shutdown code. We'll walk you through it. It's already on. There is a timer. It's almost down to zero. Three, two... What's it mean? That doesn't sound good. Jocelyn? Jocelyn? All right. Looks like the... Uh, the most of the... Uh, okay. Got it. I'm in. And everything is in black and white. No, green. Then glow cloud. What am I looking for? What did you say? I bet that's a terminal by the vending kiosk. It's got a strange counter on it that's running down. Five, four, three. Oh, look. They have a much better selection of lunch items than back in the entrance break room. Phil, you aren't making any sense. Jocelyn? Miss Bell? You're repeating yourself. You aren't making any sense either. All right. Looks like the... Uh, the most of the... Uh, okay. Got it. I'm in. And everything is in black and white. No, green. Then glow cloud. What am I looking for? What are you... A terminal. You are looking for a terminal. I got it. It's running. It's got a timer. Hit it with the axe. What? Before the timer gets to zero, hit it with the axe. Okay. Whoa. Lots of sparks. Getting out of the room. Phil, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Not feeling too good. The sphere, it's, it's slowing down. Slower. 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 It's a slow, steady... Flashing now, mostly dark, one beam of light. It slowly plays along the cavernous walls, hitting each red-tinted window in turn. Now might be a good time to leave. I agree. However, I'm feeling tired. Maybe, maybe I'll just take a little nap first. Jocelyn says that would be really bad, and I agree. If you lie down there, you might never wake up again. Then you'd be dead. You're my last intern. I'll have to fill out some major paperwork to get a new one, and it will take forever. Do you have any idea how much of an inconvenience it will be for me if you lay down and die? Stop being so selfish and start thinking about other people for a change. I... you're right. I'm totally being selfish here. I just... wait. Listen. It... Sounds like a Doppler effect of a kitten. Find it. Find that pipe. Is it striped and labeled Do Not Use Lit Match to Check Contents? Yeah. Follow it. I know that pipe. I will meet you halfway. Just keep moving. But you're on the air.
I'll take my coffee break. has happened. Let me get you up to speed. Tully managed to outrun the glacier of frozen atmosphere and got a hold of the secret police. They in turn went out and set up a speed trap. When the glacier raced by, they pulled it over and held it up at a traffic stop until the gases all sublimated into the light of the rising sun. Jocelyn Bell says, as long as he can keep it from igniting, we'll be okay. The sheriff's secret police would like to urge all citizens to avoid smoking or burning trash for the next few hours, just to be on the safe side. I found intern Phil collapsed in the tunnels and had to spend the entire coffee break dragging her back to the station and up to the nurse's office, where they immediately began decontamination procedures. She apparently had become exposed to massive amounts of radiation. And apparently, Phil ignored my orders and absorbed that lethal radiation. Almost. He is expected to fully recover. However, for his insubordination, I will be writing him up. This will not look favorably on his next quarterly review. So, not only did I have to work through another coffee break, but I will be without any interns for an entire week. This day did not go well for me. However, for Tully, things are looking up. Apparently, the Pulsar facility has been talking with the not-owned-by-angels Strexcorp, and rather than just vent old liquid hydrogen directly into the air, they will instead be using it to create a hockey rink. That's right, hockey is coming to Night Vale, and they need somebody to drive the Zamboni. Since Tully has proved his skill at dodging masses of frozen gases, he is the only man in town with job experience. So, Tully the Barber will be giving up his cacti trimming service and instead becoming Tully the Zamboni Driver. It's amazing how things can turn out. You can find yourself in a rut, doing the same thing over and over. You can find yourself in a wasted life, doing something meaningless, but then opportunity just drops in your lap. Or life might just try to roll over you like you weren't even there. Or you might find yourself stuck doing the night shift, the shift where careers go to die. 
And with that, I leave you, dear listener. So let's try and have a good morning, Night Vale. Good morning, Night Vale tonight was based on Welcome to Night Vale. Some music was from Google Play, and the rest I stole from Disparation. Terribly sorry about that, folks. Here, let me make it up to you. Here's a voucher for an extra hour in the ball pit. The coffee break was Tomorrow Never Comes by Chanel, off of Random Music Volume 2. Intern Phil was voiced by Philotes, patron goddess of the friend zone. And as always, when they start rounding up people for thought crimes, the first one behind the razor wire will be Bob. Hi, Phil, old man. So, I heard something when I got into work today, but you know what? Here, just let me play part of it for you, okay? Hi, intern Phil here. I'm just filling in. Honestly, the big guy's been depressed lately. I mean, last night, he just spent the entire time sitting there, spinning his phone around, listening to his voicemail, and sighing. So, I think it's a good thing he's taking some time off. And what better day than a day where the Night Vale community radio station is surrounded by a seemingly endless carpet of really angry arachnids. Oh, oh yeah, maybe I should have left with that. <clears throat> the Night Vale community radio station is completely surrounded by a seemingly endless carpet of protesting arachnids. Apparently, our new Night Vale community radio host for Good Morning Night Vale tonight used the S word, and it has every Eric in the town up in arms. Metaphorically, I guess it's actually up in legs. <clears throat> the spokesman for the protesters made a statement by weaving a web over my window with lettering that I will now relate to you. We are Arachnid Americans, and we demand that we be treated with the respect and honor that all living beings deserve. Be they endoskeletal, exoskeletal, or whatever the employees at the post office are, we all deserve equal rights and equal respect. First, the sheriff's secret police cutting back patrols, the book stampede with no follow-up from FEMA, and now the public use of the S-word? It is time for arachnids everywhere to come together and be heard. We shall overrun. Oh, wow. It's just like Charlotte's Web. Except that I fear for my life instead of the life of the pig. Some of the signs that the protesters carry read as follows. Mandibles up. Don't squish. You swallow eight spiders a year. Have you no shame? What do we want? Time travel. When do we want it? Irrelevant. All beings are equal. I am upset. Protest signs are an effectual means of communicating my not views on a variety of issues. And this is heavy. When asked for a response from management, the red light glowed and seemed to take on an almost physical presence. A flesh dissolving colorless miasma started to seep out of the cracks around the stone door to the management's inner sanctum. At least I assume it was flesh dissolving, otherwise I have no idea what those three skeletons were doing in the hall. <laughs> A never before seen loading dock door opened up on the back of the building. A giant bloated purplish tongue lashed out and scooped up thousands of protesters, scrunching them up into a ball of arachnid paste before dragging it back inside or upon the loading So, apparently, you filled in for Cecil while he was on vacation. Well, we'll circle back to that little problem later. Uh, my issue is, nobody told me about the arachnid Americans and their little protest. 
see if somebody had told me they were angry about being called spiders, well, do you think that would have been important to know before, oh, say, the Ace Hardware commercial I did last night where I said the word spider about 50 times? Because our sponsor, the one who just opened up a new store in the Tarantula District, who wanted a commercial that was made specifically to appeal to spiders? Well, apparently, during the day while I slept, about 20 bazillion spiders swarmed the place, completely covered it in webbing, drained all four teen people working there of all bodily fluids, and burned it to the ground. Before, they peed on it. Did you know that spiders could pee? I didn't. Learn something new every day. <laughs> right now, where our sponsor used to live and work and play and love is a giant smoldering pile of ash and spider urine. <laughs> you know, if I knew about that little protest earlier, I might have told our sponsors that their commercial wasn't such a hot idea. Do you have any idea what you've done? Do you know how hard it is to get new sponsors? Most sponsors want a radio station that doesn't turn their storefront into a slurry of cinders and arachnid piddle. It's kind of hard to sell that, you know? I mean, sir, we could, like, and at no additional cost, we could turn your place of business into a place of final rest. Oh, you'd only want that if it reeked of spider secretions? Well, today is your lucky day. Phil, call me. Now.